In this video, we're going to be ranking every single unique bloodline from worst to best. Now, in this video, I did say that it's going to be the unique bloodline. So if you don't see a bloodline here and you think it's unique, feel free to comment below why you think it's unique and where you think it should place. I will be checking the comments out and, and harding anything I think is good. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, subscribe, let's get right to the video, guys. All right, so coming in last place, aka 15th place on this list, is going to be Ghost Karashi. This one's for very obvious reasons. It's a very close range bloodline that really has nothing going for it. All of the moves that just have better versions of them or, you know, they're just entirely entirely garbage so even though this bloodline is very unique there's nothing really like it it is still it doesn't really necessarily make it good obviously since it's going to be ranked last on this list i would say ghost karashi if you spin it you're very unlucky you're probably going to hate your existence because you could have got any other rare bloodline in the game besides ghost karashi but in the end of things ghost karashi you know it is a unique bloodline it can be fun to use depending on how you view the game and even though it is bad you might might find some enjoyment out of it and they come to 14 place it could be two bloodlines surge slash web now when it comes to surge surge is going to be a trap based bloodline now i actually did use this they i'm pretty sure they are going to be rebuffing surge if they have not already so there's that because surge was heavily nerfed now the reason why surge is going to be this low is because i'm not 100 sure whether they rebuffed it or not and the hot fix nerf made surge absolute garbage now if surge did get that buff it desperately needed it would be ranked around eighth i would believe but as a standard right now uh surge really isn't that great it's almost impossible to use consistently in fights a lot of the moves you know it, it's kind of difficult to get someone to step on something when they could see it 24 7 so even though it is a very unique bloodline you get to place traps down on the map it's a very cool function and i do think that you know it, it is very 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 unique when it was actually the best it was i think the reason why it was going to be so good is because people didn't really know how to deal with it they couldn't see it on the ground and they might forget that there's traps on the ground or whatever and you get to set up your own combos i think the concept of served was an absolutely amazing concept and it's an absolutely very very fun bloodline to use especially in rpg servers because in rpg servers someone's going to step on it one way or another you know what i mean now like i said web is also going to be in 14th web is honestly going to be a very unique bloodline as well it is based off of spider webs and stuff like that um now the reason why web is going to be 14th place i do actually think web doesn't really fit well into this meta the main ability of it that is actually good is the third one for traveling and the second one for move stacking now for the reason why i'm saying it's not going to be fitting very good into this meta is because you're taking up an entire kd slot to be able to move stack when you don't need to move stack to do 150,000 damage 150,000 damage was the easiest numbers in the hit in the game combo wise and just because of that web really has fell fallen off because you can't move stack with it anymore if you already at the 150k damage mark but a web is going to be in 14th place because i do feel like that's a very good place for web have you ever gotten 80 spin rarity and gotten something like just atomic well that's because you haven't hit the like button in this video yet if you hit the like button in this video you're guaranteed to get 10 a million times luck 100 now coming to 13th place it could be another two bloodlines it's going to be jeremaki and forge rengoku now the reason why jeremaki is going to be in 13th and not last of is because it did get that buff it desperately needed the emote m1s no longer knocked back and this may seem like a very small buff to you guys but this actually drastically changed the bloodline into actually being usable the reason for this is because the actual best thing of the mode but best thing of the bloodline before was the mode but the mode was unusable due to the m1 knockback so that since that was removed the mode is actually quite good the q spec is an iframe ability and the c spec is a stun ability it's honestly a really good mode in my opinion the fact they removed the m1 knockback does make jeremaki significantly better than what it was before now the reason why it's going to be 13th and not higher in this list is because the actual moves are really kind of bad the first move is honestly you know pretty terrible all things considered it's a very low play like low place lock stun there are much better place lock stuns in the game and it's just really not that great the second move is probably one of the most unique aspects of jeremaki it's, it's a hair grab ability you grab some with your hair and you come in very fun ability to use but that does not make it necessarily good it has too much startup to be used in any combo and it does have the occasional you know impact of glitching someone so that they fling across the map which can be quite funny if you guys enjoy that now the other one in 13th is going to be forge ren as i previously mentioned forge regoku is actually a pretty good bloodline i'm you know that, that's a joke obviously it's a 13th place now the forge ren is a very unique bloodline having one of the you know coolest modes of the game with the domain function but the reason why it's going to be 13th is because it is very mode carried the actual abilities to forge ren are very you know very very bad but the mode is quite good so it is a very mode carried bloodline and the moves do not make up for it whatsoever now coming to 12th place it could be pikasenko slash minikaze now pikasenko obviously is a very unique bloodline it also is quite good i do actually think pikasenko abilities they can be very useful in combat and the second move you know it was nerfed as a traveling move but now it's kind of a combo extending combo starting move overall but i do feel like you know pikasenko does have you know it's overall a pretty okay bloodline there's not really anything to fault about it other than the third ability 
you know, being kind of, it's kind of wonky to use, all things considered, but I do think Pika Seko overall, it's a pretty okay bloodline. It is definitely unique, and it's definitely going to be a 12th place. Now, like I said, the other one in 12th place is going to be Minikaze. Now, Minikaze only has one usable move, which is the third move. The third move is, is so good that it actually is ranked as high on this list. That single move is a very, very easy to use combo standing move that it, it pretty much is like, it, it's just a really easy to use, very long ranged combo extending or starting move, depending on what you're doing. Now, like, I feel like this move is kind of severely underestimated. It is kind of worth taking a bloodline slot just to use this move because it does a lot of damage. It's really easy to use. It's really easy to combo extend with. You just have to remember to M1 at the end of it or you over to be able to get out of it because it does have a very, very small gap in it. Now, coming to the left place, it could be Red Shiki and Vengeance. Now, Red Shiki obviously is going to be a really cool, you know, it's a very cool based bloodline. Uh, I do think that the moves are quite good. I do think Red Shiki in general is a very, very good bloodline, but it is very hard to use and some of the booties, it is almost impossible to reach their full potential because the game either lags too much. Uh, it's ki kind of counter dominated, which is a very hard counter to some of Red Shiki's abilities. But the second mode is also quite good. It's very good for PvE content and actually it does a lot of damage against players as well, especially the C spec. So I do think Red Shiki does make up for its faults. And I do think it is very solid at 11th place. Now, like I said, Vengeance is also going to be 11th place. Now, oh, yeah. there is a lot of Vengeance haters in the game. I do think Vengeance is an okay bloodline. It is very, very easy to use, which is why I think it's so popular. Vengeance being a very, very easy to use bloodline, it makes it very good for noobs. And the fact you can buy with Rokoids makes it a very easy to access bloodline. And the fact that the moves are so easy to use, like the first, second, and third one are all very, very easy to use. I would I would say the first and second are the easiest to use of them. Third, mo third one does take a little bit of, you know, thinking to actually achieve the full potential of it. But the mode is also quite good. The C spec, you can do up to like 120,000 damage with it. And then the Q spec, obviously, is a counter. And then the throwables, you know, that's very easy to use as well. I think Vengeance is very good noob bloodline. If you're not very good at PvP, Vengeance is worth a shot. And it definitely is unique because it's one of the very, very, very rare Thai based bloodlines. It doesn't actually use a Thai Jutsu style you just punch people which is time now coming to 10th place is going to be ryan ren goku now ryan ren obviously is going to be inking itself up into the top 10 on this list out of 18 bloodlines so some of the bloodlines were shared a rank so it's not really you know 18 ranks 18 bloodlines though that's very solid that's almost halfway through the list i do think ryan ren has a lot of merits the mode is just very terrible the first move is a pool iframe move very easy to use very easy to integrate into combos as well the second move is a pseudo counter iframe attack ability honestly a pretty good ability all things considered and if you spam click with it you can do up like a hundred thousand damage you can start combos with it really good ability honestly third ability isn't that great but the first and second ability are just so good that the fact that it's going to rank it up to 10th on this list you know what i mean so even though the mode is absolute garbage those two abilities definitely do make it 10th on this list they go to ninth place it's going to be normal ren goku normal red goku is very you know mode carried uh, i do think that while the first and second ability of ren goku are very usable uh, i do think that you know they, they can be countered quite hard like the second one doesn't really give you speed boost or anything like that it is just a, you know a pool ability pool abilities in general are really good for combos and stuff like that now the first ability of ren goku is going to be kind of a weird one it's a charge ability it used to be quite good in you know the old meta because you could actually start combos with it imagine diva ren third but you know worse that's kind of what ren goku first was also something about ren goku the mode is just so unique and it's such a fun mode to use it has to be on ninth of this list it also is a really really good mode i do think that it kind of doesn't fit into this meta very well but it does have a lot of versatility and is a good ability overall the company in 11th place is going to be bankai inferno bankai inferno very solid eighth place on this list now i do think that bankai inferno's first move is a very broken move but the other booties of bankai inferno are pretty trash even the mode the first move by the way if you guys are unaware is a ability that basically is a it serves as a breakaway move now the fact you can use it in stuns now you can use it in pretty much in anything now makes the move pretty broken it's a really easy you know to use move and i do think it fits into this meta really really well considering perfect block is kind of the number one thing to do so i do think that bankai inferno is definitely an eighth base bloodline for that single ability alone it is just that good of an ability that it doesn't matter that all the other abilities are trash it needs to be an eighth place on this list they're coming to seventh place it could be shiro glacier now shiro glacier is a very cool bloodline uh you know did you guys get the pun cool you know because it's ice but when it comes to shiro glacier seventh place i do think that the abilities are quite good it does take some finesse to use the abilities properly the mode is also really really good as well with that q spec now the first ability obviously is going to be a 
ranged ability. It knocks someone into the air. It's probably one of the worst abilities of Shiro, in my opinion. The second move is a pretty high damage ability that it's kind of like Acid Dragons, if you guys know what that is. It just does a lot of damage. It's a pretty delayed attack. And then the third move of it is pretty much it, it's a stun, not only stun global cooldown. It, it's a ragdoll, you know, place lock stun pseudo thing that does a lot of damage as well. Really easy to integrate into combos and really good for just getting people out of, you know, like you're nobody's gonna expect you to use Shiro Glacier. Nobody, because nobody uses the bloodline. The mode is also quite good as I previously mentioned, and it definitely is a very, very unique bloodline in this game. The company to sixth place is gonna be Eastwood Karashi. Eastwood Karashi is gonna be almost in that top five with that first and third ability. The first and third ability are definitely the abilities of Eastwood Karashi that are the single best abilities of Eastwood. The mode isn't that good. I do think the mode is very usable though, but it isn't that good. And then the second ability is just honestly, let's be real here, it's bad. It's trash. But the first and third ability are really good. The first one's a really easy to use combo extending move that is extremely long range. Extremely. Like it's very, very long range. Like you hit someone like very far away. And then the third move is an iframe ability. Now, the reason why it's so strong is because it's it's an instant iframe, not in the iframe global cooldown. So it is just it, if you know how to use the third move properly, it'll pretty much guarantee that you won't get comboed, which is a very good thing in this game. If you guys are unaware, iframes are amazing. The company fifth place is gonna be Van Helsing. Now, Van Helsing did receive that major buff to the third move being removed from the auto dodge global cooldown. May seem like a small buff, it is huge. The fact that it was removed from the global cooldown actually makes it usable now because it's it's not, you know, it's not an auto dodge. So the main dose has to be on the global cooldown. Now, the reason why Van Helsing is gonna be at fifth is I actually think Van Helsing is a very good bloodline. It's a very iframe based bloodline with the second C spec and throwable. Not to mention the fact that it actually can combo them with the first and third move. The second move is also quite good for starting combos and stuff like that. It's a really good team fighting bloodline in general. And I do think Van Helsing definitely deserves its fifth place. And it actually is one of the most unique, if not the most unique bloodline in the entire game. There is nothing like Van Helsing. They come to fourth place, it could be Shindai Akuma. Now, Shindai Akuma, you know, uh, the, I think the fact that the clone, you know, it's very clone based makes it very unique because none of the other bloodlines in the game are very clone based. Now, obviously, Shindai Akuma is a very, very good bloodline. It has a really good counter as the first ability. The Q spec is an iframe mode drain ability. Honestly, really, really good for catching people off guard. And the C spec is like the first move, but just a little bit worse, in my opinion. So, I do think Shindai Akuma definitely deserves that solid fourth place on this list. You guys know about Shindai Akuma already. You don't really need me to rant about it, so I won't. They come to third place, it's gonna be Diva Ren Goku. Now, Diva Ren obviously is an extremely good bloodline. It has a really good combo extending move. It has a really good, you know, stun move as on the first move, and it has a really, 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 really good third move. Third move of Diva Ren is generally what people use. Now, Diva Ren did receive a bunch of nerfs, but I do think that it still is a very, very good bloodline. And I do think that the, the thing holding it back is honestly the mode. I've used the mode quite a bit now, and the mode is very bad, in my opinion, compared to the moves. Like, the mode is isn't necessarily the worst mode in the game but it definitely isn't good either i'd give it like a 5 out of 10 mode if not a 4 out of 10 but the moves are very close to being 10 out of 10 like the moves are amazing the mode is bad i do think that the fact that that exists in the game you know it's very rare to have a bloodline where the moves are good but the mode is bad it's generally going to be that the mode is good but the moves are bad that's kind of how bloodlines work in this game and i think it's a very good refresh of deep run actually having good moves for once and very easy to mo use moves at that the coming to second place is going to be strange you guys knew this is going to be in this list strange has been receiving a bunch of nerfs recently i do still think strange is a very very good bloodline in general and i do think that strange now is kind of, it's very close to what strange should have been you know back in the day uh, i do think strange before uh, so here here's like a letter rank if you guys are unaware strange before was like an s plus 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 strange now is like an a plus if that you know that makes sense to you guys or maybe an s minus at that now strange is still a very good bloodline it's kind of a lot harder to use now but if you guys know how to use strange properly you still will slap some cheeks with it by the way, guys, what is your favorite bloodline in Shinder Life? If you want to have comments below, we'll be checking them out. Now, coming to first place, it's going to be the Snake Man bloodline. This is the newest bloodline in the game, and it definitely is a very unique bloodline at that. It's, a lot of the abilities don't really have any abilities to compare them to either, just because, the, you know, the abilities are just so unique. And the fact that the mode buffs the abilities is extremely cool. Now, the only other time that this has existed in the game was Xeno Dokai. And the fact with Xeno Dokai is it didn't really even buff the abilities. It kind of just made the abilities longer range. It also made it so the second move you know you were you were higher up off the ground and i do think that you know in general snake man is a very unique bloodline i actually th also think it is very very good as well now the first move is going to be an instant instant if not near instant ability that is basically a combo extending move it does a bit of damage it's a stun move now the fact that you're actually so high up off off of someone makes the move kind of you know weird to integrate into combos which i do think is its major weakness but if you can find a way to do that it definitely is a very good ability now the second ability is going to be an instant combo extending ability there's not really much to say about it you hold it down it does a lot of damage that's kind of 
have all there is for the second move it's an instant close range ability it just generally will do a lot of damage if you throw it into your combos and then obviously the third move is going to be an extremely long range block breaking move now the third move can be kind of difficult to use if you have bad aim but if you have good aim this ability will catch people off guard like no other it is basically an instant block breaking long range move so if you guys can you know figure out a way to use this bloodline really really well this move is very very funny i do think ragnar first is a better version of this move but the third this move is actually still good in itself now the reason why it's going to be in first place is because all of these moves even in base are actually you know decent moves if not good moves but when you throw the mode into the equation it actually makes not only makes the moves do more damage and better overall but the mode itself is probably the best thing of snake man the c-spec obviously does a lot of damage it's kind of like i would i would you know compare it to something like tengoku c-spec um you know it is a delayed attack now if you can land this it does do a lot of damage obviously the q-spec is a counter it's actually very comparable to six pack naramaki second mode counter just does a lot of damage it knocks people very far back it's an okay counter overall if you can actually land it and then the throwable is an extremely good ability i think the throwable is actually the best ability of the mode it's basically the snake sage throwable without the downsides of having knockback m1s and obviously the m1s you know are good as well the stats are okay of it i do think you know snake man is a very good bloodline in general anyways that's it for this video because you enjoyed this video remember to like subscribe hope you guys bye bye